Hello and welcome to another Jungle Guide and in this one we are going to be having a look at some ultimate early game techniques and practices that you need to improve your overall jungling. The concept of this video is quite simple to give you a breakdown of the early phases of the early game for every single MMR so essentially you have all the knowledge you need to get out of low elo, to get to diamond and to get to master. To have those strong fundamentals on which to get fed and climb. We need to have a good early game plan, good execution and from there we can build upon the foundations of our carry potential. You need everything to go smoothly and go well so that you can actually become that 1v9 carry jungle that you want to be in the mid and the late game and close those games out. And on the subject of having smooth surfaces and good early game plans, Rost has a message. Hello, have you ever noticed how when you get Ocean Soul, the map is hairy? To me, nothing makes me happier than seeing the fire soul. All grass is torched, the surfaces are smooth, and I can eat through everything with such ease. Rost likes the feel. Well, the good news is Manscaped is the only option for you to feel the same way. Keep yourself hygienic and clean with the best products made from better materials than the orbs that gave me form. The Perfect Package 4.0 kit has the all-new head-to-toe Lawn Mower Body Trimmer and possesses pathing precision that rivals even the best junglers and it's how Fakayu himself learned the value of close shaving because it wasn't his face. For those without the genetic power to grow such ornlicious facial hair, you can use the body trimmer all over to look like a boiled egg. For the volley bears amongst you, feel free to use it in the shower and with up to 90 minutes of juice and wireless charging, the battery will last longer than a mechanical god's wireless mouse. You've surely noticed how my perfect red skin has no blemishes and is literally perfectly smooth. That's because along with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver, you will be feeling fresh, smooth, and smelling good with no chafing for those fast rotations. You can get all of this for 20% off plus free international shipping and the two free gifts. How generous. Click the link in the description below and use code for Caillou at manscaped.com. And yes, while this is focused a little bit more on your heavy early game junglers like your releases and rec size, it really does work on any sort of champion also like a Karthus and Fiddlesticks. A good early game plan and good early game execution for a scaling jungler means you scale sooner, means you can win earlier, and there is simply less risk in terms of throwing the games in that mid game phase where you could just be winning it. But with these concepts in mind, let's now jump to the coaching examples and the gameplay examples to show you the small things and big things that will allow you to get better control in the early game, specifically the very, very early game, because we want this foundational principle of, hey, I executed well, I have a good lead, I get my team out on first back if I'm a Warwick or something, and then I can translate that to further leads. If you're always playing in the negative early, you're basically just making the whole game very difficult for yourself. Kindred obviously can do different clears, but it is better to be a bit more aggressive, yeah? Now in the Kindred's case here, we know that the Echo is most likely um, going to do a 4 camp, uh, some kind of 3 camp or a 5 camp. What the Echo's done, and of course these are a bit more both junglers focused, is brilliant. And I love it. And I can pause because it's a coaching video. This is what I would do every single time I'm against a strong invader who might try some kind of blue cheese. And I recommend you guys do it as well. If you are not on a jungler that can start a control ward and a pot, much like my Zyra and Orn and so on, then obviously here you might just simply go the same kind of thing we're talking about. Let's just reverse clear it. Let's just go blue, red, and now you can go down. You know, it's absolutely removes the issue of a three cam invader. So let's see what exactly transpires. The Kindred's gonna wall hop thinking, haha, I have you now. And then realize that it's all gone and the Echo's already pieced out to the bottom side. So excellent pathing by the Echo. And this is how you punish aggressive pathing when it's predictable. Now, the Kindred will be able to sneak away those Krugs. If he had a ward, or if you do have a ward in this situation, not always will you, leave it if you're gonna do the reverse clear just to see if they go for that invade. Obviously, he's just reverse clear down, he's gonna control the crab. Orange Jesus strikes true for the Kindred to get the mark on the top side and at least they're able to get one camp counter jungle. So the downside here is that the Echo doesn't get any counter jungling camps. Kindred in the meantime, waiting for a little bit of patience here. Now we should track that the Echo is down bottom side, especially if you know he got leashed, right? Um, good patience there, and that is free as can be. And now of course we do still have to pay attention to the Echo. We know he's bottom side. He decides to gain bottom lane instead of worrying about mid lane. Excellently done. And I just wanna highlight something here because a lot of people a lot of people kind of said stuff about the Hecarim. I mean, even, even the Hecarim said something about it um, in the coaching that I released. Actually, you guys would have seen the Patreon coaching already, where he waffled here and went back to base. And I said, well, you can get a bottom lane. You just have to wait for the wave for them to push up a little bit more. And if the Hecarim had come to the bottom lane, you see, it would have been about the same. And if you've got knockback CC, and of course, Echo's brilliant at this excellent W, then, I mean, look where you can go. You can go a lot further than you think for your ganks. 
Don't hesitate in those moments. Now, Kindred is just walking around a wall. Now, this is just stupid. This is... Happens to the best of us, ladies and gentlemen. Happens to the best of us. Even D1 Kindred mains. There's no real reason to be there. You know why there's no real reason to be there? Because if you know he got leashed here, and you go to the top side and you don't see him, most likely he reverse cleared down. You see him on the bottom side and he has the magical 24 CS mark. You know he did a 5 camper because you took that one. You know this is gone. And you know once he's done this gank, there's literally zero, literally zero reason for him to be on the side. This is wasted time. Now as we shift to a more platinum and gold example, and again this still works for low elo and a lot of diamonds still don't do this very well either. We have a Warwick doing leashless red as the enemy Nunu gets leashed on his red and then you watch a fiesta unfold on the bottom lane. A cataclysmic comedic event because you most likely are rolling on the floor laughing if you're watching this in game. What's going to happen though is his bottom lane is going to somehow grief this and then our Warwick needs to adapt this path to capitalize on this particular scenario if you have fear here she dies yeah 100 percent, she's dead so you're spot on mike spot on assessment i should have just done the bloody grump get three fear them suckers they die 100 mm. don't think you get yeah I don't, you might not get a double but you might but you definitely kill kaiser with your damage with your pta proc you definitely do with caitlin right here so her frustration could have been completely alleviated you get fed bot lane is losing from them Huge, I think. Absolutely huge. Yeah, I think you're spot on. You know, I think three is important for that because they burnt all their subs and, and you're Warwick going leashless, so you can just watch it. Um, it is faster simply to do the wolves into the Gromp because now you maintain good sequencing. And for a camp champion that's not wanting to do Raptors and Krugs, having these two off the map is better anyway. But I don't even think you should have necessarily done that. I think you should have just smited the, the, the crab and taken it. Because now you're going to spend time walking up taking this and you're going to spend time spaghetti pathing back down to take this. And now you can now you can transition, but I think I think I would just wait and take the crab for three. Hey, we use the control ward. <laughs> so the control ward, control. if you placed it up here, would have given you a lot of valuable information. So from the Nunus perspective, now I don't know why this donkey is doing raptors. Like you're doing red, right? And you see this. Let's go. go yeah, because yeah. what's the difference between a Nunu with a red buff level two four CS doing this? And a new new red buff, 8 CS with Raptors, nothing. You're still level 2, so you might as well go now. He could have won the game right here. He could have won the game. But he didn't, so it's good, because he's, he's gold. Slash, going to be platinum, so it's, it doesn't really matter. So he does this, right? We watch him. Now, your control ward would show this. Now, let's see. Look, he doesn't even check it, because no one expects it to be a control ward right here. So you get vision. Right now, you'd get vision. And then you'd see he'd place this. And this would be disabled. Would he notice it? Unlikely. He goes and does this. He goes and does this. He goes into river. You would see this. So now you know the dude most likely did blue grump because you could see a CS 16. You see this. Did he not walk over the bush? Or is that just a weird replay it thing? It's close. No, he, 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 <laughs> he walked in briefly. You say, oh, there's a possibility he doesn't even see it. So you're going to get even more value. You see how that works in the Zelo. It's brilliant. But you can see all of this and be very, very relaxed. Very, very relaxed. And I think that's peace of mind. Because, yeah, you're going to see... Uh, you're going to be a little bit tilted from this, this Caitlyn, um, you know, trauma dumping in chat. But you'd see him there and be at least relaxed that Nunu Snowball isn't going to come smack you in the face from the side. Because at that point, that's crossing your mind, right? You don't know where he is, what he wants to do. Okay, so here, press W, kill them. You see the Soraka. You see her moving down. This is beautiful now. Leona misses, unfortunately, but she's walking straight at you and you see her. So if you had pressed the button, this is a dead, 100% dead Soraka. Look at her. So this is exactly the same as your Viego coaching that we did last week. You remember, you had a nice little full camp and I told you, pull the trigger. It doesn't matter that the jungler's here. He's not gonna be able to rotate in time. It's a cane. He's busy farming and thinking about, you know, his dual personality. This is the same thing. She's a goat. She's not thinking about you. She's they, These people are not thinking about... She's literally... They're not thinking about you. You don't cross their minds. Like, she's thinking a little bit, what if Warwick comes? But she's not thinking, what if he's literally right there in the bush? She has no clue. And you're perfectly positioned. It's so nice. You're, like, right in the literal spot where I press W all the time. Because you're out of vision radius. So this is huge. Press it, pull the trigger. There's no no time to waste. And she dies. Because you're going to fear her towards the, 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 the relic. Good grief. The Leona. And the Leona, all the, Le 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 all the Leona has to do is walk up and press Q. 
What's Soraka going to do? She's going to try silence you. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold your Q to avoid the CC and you're going to follow her and just auto attack her to death. Boom. Bot lane one. Two ganks. GG. And you'd have enough for Tiamat. Beautiful. That's your game. That's your game. With Warwick, that's it. And now you're wasting time. You're losing your control. Uh, you see? She silenced you and you couldn't get your, your E off. In this situation, that's why you press W so you can get close. So when she does do that, right, you can Q and avoid it. You want to be melee range. So uh, for, war for a Warwick early game, that's the source right there. And here comes the Nunu. We saw him. Oh, he, he's, he's, he's not interested. This is the most passive Nunu I've ever seen. We're both, we're both very, very passive. So. No, you're, you're not passive. You were here well, is it, it twice. Like I came up, I come up for the gank and I'm just like, okay, well. <laughs> At least you showed up for the meeting. Okay, I mean, you you were in your pajamas, but you showed up for the meeting. The, the Lunar just stayed at home. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Which is maybe worse. I showed them the map. <laughs> yeah, but... You you you, you kind of want that, right? You want him to take your raptors. <laughs> please, please, sir. I want this to be level four. Yeah, but this is obvious. Let's see. So, so we finished. Let's get the exact timer. So we'll probably finish it sooner. The Silas it's two forty one, right? So at 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 what four fifty six? At four fifty six, you're gonna have a second grump. And look where you are right now. Second Grump. So, if you had executed your gank in the bot lane before, and it was nicely done, you'd have no Nunu here because you'd be pushing and your bot lane would be resetting, and you'd have second Grump and second Wolves to take before resetting. So you'd have mm -hmm. two Wolf rotations, two Grump rotations, and your blue, and a Scuttle, and two successful ganks in the bottom lane. And now we can go topside. No Tiamat. Oh, no. And now you're forced to go down to this bottom Grump, which is not going to spawn in conjunction with your wolves. So it's a solo camp. Um, and it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm this. <laughs> this this is so going on Patreon. This is so going on Patreon purely because it's like the Warwick. Uh, only Warwick mains understand what you just did. <laughs> this is what we didn't really click on as much. Uh, you yeah. you you. you you kind of like as you start clearing. Yeah, I'm pressing the F keys, but then it kind of falls to the wayside very quickly. Yeah. Here we we need to see this in in, in your elo. You want to beat these people because, again, they do things more more decisively. They do things um, with a bit more determination. But they don't always understand why. You see, and here he's gone from a blue side very clearly because we saw him get leashed because the delay bot lane showing to the bottom lane. He's going to shove this, get a lot of experience from this, and now he's going to. Actually, let's watch it. All right, then. So during this time, if you were a Rek'Sai, what are you doing? I, I would be at his red and, and Raptors right now. Yeah. You're playing a Graves. Where are you? I, red and Raptors. Yeah, red and Raptors, yeah. Right. And so a farming jungler loses that impact immediately. It's just it's just impossible. I understand this because, like, what are you going to do in this state? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just get caught naked at a wedding. I mean, it's, this is this is not good. If someone walks in here, you're feasting. So obviously this wasn't the best clip, but it's still, it's still, it's serviceable. Like yeah. you're 315 crabbing, right? But the fact that we see the Javan go bot side, all right? We see him push that, we see him gank it. You now have two choices. Now, unfortunately, you shouldn't have died. Do we gank mid lane or do we start to have a look about where he might be? Right. Because if he spent the time taking crab, okay, where do you think he might be based on pacing? Um, in terms of like, he, he would probably be, um, I'm going to reveal it, but you can take a stab. Let's see how close you get. If, if I were playing the Jarvan here, I would yes. probably be in river brush ready to counter gank mid. You anticipate the Karth is going to show to this. So you want to counter gank from the bottom side. Yeah, probably. That's probably where I'd be. He's here mm -hmm. because you are a good jungler. He is so unholy concerned that you're taking his camps. So we go for the gank. And she does the good thing. As I said, this is very good. Let's go down, okay? You're afraid of the Karthus showing up. Now here's where things get interesting. Because she moves back up, it's good to float with the Kiana. The only other option for the Jarvan was what we saw. Those are the two options. In fact, the third option is quite funny. He could have just gank taken this and reset and now gone straight down with an itemization spike, but that's a different discussion and I'm not always sure it's worth in his situation, but 
yeah. I think. Either way, those are the two most probable, uh, most likely things that are going to happen. So here, look at look at where you're going. The, the Kiana honestly believes you're here to help kill the Ari. This flex is so important. This body language, this mis this this intent is so important because you could have easily hijacked this. Yeah. You could have easily still gone and hijacked this. Maybe if you screw the rap, just go just go take the red, right? But I agree with you. I'm really worried. Boom, boom, boom. Gank, take. Oh, I gotta be here. You gotta be here for this, right? So this is a good play, I think. But when it changes and ceases to be a good play, is now she misses the chump. What you got? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, there's no reason not, like to be scared here. Go hit Qs. Yeah. Go spam some Qs. If Javin shows up, we can play that accordingly, right? That's that's a 2v2. Assess a 2v2. Are you comfortable winning a 2v2 here? If you're Rexay, like, please, please arrive. Let's go. Yeah. If you're Graves, please arrive. Let's go. That's your champion knowledge. That's your champ champion comfortability level. And that's how you can assess your champion pool. Look, in these situations, out of your entire ocean, which champions are you comfortable turning in an Ari and the potentially 2v2ing? Like an honest response in, in your mind. Because these plays right here that you're seeing, and it's so dumb because, again, it's D4, it's D3, it's D2, it's D1. They don't always understand these little moments. But the Ari turning back, because she knows you're too passive, she knows you're just going to leave because you're Karthus, you're farming jungler. You don't want to fight. Because the Javan hasn't shown yet, we can assume that out of the two options, there's no way he did crab and sat here for 30 seconds and isn't here right now. Right. So he must have left somewhere else. Um, I, it's difficult to say categorically which side of the map he's like, is he here? Is he here? Like, you don't 100% know, but it has to be in your mind. Okay, look, the dude didn't show up and the Ari's moving back into the mid lane. So where's the Javan? Because we moved, she moves down, we're like, ah, here comes the counter gang. Wait a second, she's moving back up. Kiana says, okay, why is she moving back up with no mana? You should be on this. You see how the space between you guys now? Yeah. Look at this. This is huge. I mean, she's dead. She's yeah, dead. Yeah, if I just had one Q, yeah. One Q. Yeah. And then we flash and we miss it. I mean, in 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 all respect to the um the Ari, she dodged it so cool. Right? Yeah, no, she played that pretty well. Yeah. But well, this, other this... than walking up here, that was not playing. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... This was stupid. But given that she did a stupid thing, the subsequent thing wasn't as stupid. <laughs> yeah. so, this guy, okay. I want to watch his body he's language, like, actually. He's like so lost in this game. I hate losing to these players, but... He should be cutting down now. Yeah, now no, he should be cutting down. He's so lost. Ah. And that's okay. my point. It's impossible to purely 100% always track these people. You just have yeah. to go on like, your, your intuition a little bit. Look how long it takes him. <laughs> I, I just like respect people too much, especially yes. at this elo. Yes, like... yes, there you go. You got it. You gave too much respect to the Ari. And those little body language signs, this is this is the master plus stuff that 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 when you watch a Bjorkson or something like this, you're like, wow, well you when you watch Faker, you see how quickly and, and how I guess the word is how nimble they are on their champions, right? Yeah. How they pilot. And I told you here, please back off because the Javan's going to show up 100%. This is just easy. Yeah, mode. I should have I should have let it crash earlier <laughs> and then eat half of it. I feel like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Yeah, you, you were being too kind. In this example, we drop down to Silver and we have a Kane who's doing a cheeky cheesy invade. Something that is very good in low elo, but only if you understand how it works and execute it to its fullest potential. This old tech, I, I, mean, I put this in a guide in 2020. Um, that I love this cheeky uh, stuff in this elo because people very often start start on on the, on the blue and so you can always get away with this and if they do start on the red you do you do the trick where you kind of just e in and smite and get away get out <laughs> uh, yeah but actually almost never get anyone coming here really that's fantastic yeah it's good yeah. strategy yeah i like this this is it's clever you leave a ward behind it, it tracks the information you just mess with this guy's day he's mm -hmm. miserable now um yeah it's fantastic so what i'm doing here if i'm you is you see this, and you see this. See this? Look at his HP. Mm -hmm. You currently have a small window where you can maybe try and gank this before Viego is going to be able to rotate. And he, uh, he's going to ward thinking it's going to help, but you're Kane, so it's not. All right. The point also so much is if you're, play with, if you're playing with your brother a lot, um, yeah. so in this situation, depending on when you're playing with him or not, it could also be rotational ganks after the Grump. Because now you spend, you spend this, this strategy is good, but you spend a lot of time on the Raptors, on the red, and now you spend a lot of time crossing the river to get your camp, so your level 3 is delayed. The alternative point of that strategy is because you've warded here, and you see him doing this, you can simply do the Krugs too, huh? You have the ward protection, 
You have your mid lane protection. You can see the top laner. You know it's not warded as you told me because people just don't expect this. You can take his whole red side and get level three. And from there now, instead of wasting time crossing the river, okay, you can take this and just gank the Malphite from a really good angle. Really nice angle of attack here. And that's a free flash. And if Teemo gets his Ignite off and some burn damage, that's a dead Malphite, you see? So that's really good. And what you can do then is from there, you fall back down to your blue side. Viego's gonna see this and maybe try and invade you, but your mid lane has prior and you're communicating so you say, okay, 2v1. And that's exactly kind of what happens here, right? So it's the same outcome, except you've not wasted time after red being level two, and we're probably able to get a nice gank in the mouth fight. Now in the event that you do Raptors, Krugs, and feel like, okay, the top lane is moving, the mid lane's moving, I need to get out, because maybe it's warded, you know, hypothetically, mm. and you go to your blue side here, I'm still thinking, okay, this is a good gank. You know, don't feel too obsessed with saving your smite for blue. Now, yes, we do want to secure it, but don't play too defensively over it. You know, if we smite this, this is at 615. If you smite this and kill it, you know, you're full HP and you can go gank. Level three with W, 90% slow. You don't have to do the blue because the grump is going to give you enough juice to handle that. If you, as you say, never really have an issue with him running into you, then he's just going to come. Look, look, he's confused. He doesn't know what to do now. He kind of wants to go and invade your blue side thinking you're yeah. probably there. But I knew it. Uh, I was yeah. thinking straight away. That's why I told him to come. Mm -hmm. Like, look, he's already coming in. But if you like, even if you don't take W, uh, even if you um, the, if you just take W after after Gromp, for the blue, you're just sitting in the bush and tanking a lot of damage. The W also allows you to kite it a little bit because of the slow, right? So it's it's not as good as having d two procs of double Q. But yeah. if something happens that you need to rotate before finishing the blue. You have a, a spell that you can use, but even now, you know, you go in full on here. If you had hit flash W'd, maybe you even didn't need to flash W to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you might even might have even saved your flash. That's hypothetical. We don't really know, but at the very least, you don't need to commit anymore because the dude is currently dead. He's already dead. Done. You know, and like Zed can go back to the lane and you can carry on about your business. You guys don't have to chase too much now. Your brother also has to use his flash to kill the Viego, but if you have W, he wouldn't have had to do that. And he'd have Ignite still available for the Katarina. If you just leave that wave... So let's see. He goes in ints, okay. We have more red than blue, it's just a very easy thing, I'm not, we're not gonna get too much into it, but... There's just more red than blue here, you can just simply last hit or carry on about your business, look for crabs. Because this will, this, will, this will be fine for us. But once you've auto-attacked all this whole wave now, okay? Now you've got two baby blues joining this wave. Now you've got a whole stack of blues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, versus six. So this is now going to push in a bit more to the Katarina. So the Katarina is going to get back into lane, right? And the wave is going to be pushed further up the river. Now, if your brother doesn't care about being ganked, then so be it. But for random mid laners, if you want them to not be ganked, it would have been better just to leave it after the initial uh, gank, just because it'd be pushing a little bit more in this direction. By the time they get back to lane, you could go do crab and then you could repeat gank it. And look, look at this. You see what I told you about the wave? Mm -hmm. Because you hit it initially and then left more blue than red, is a very simple metric. Look where he has to be to catch it. Yeah. And because of that, Viego shows up and says, hello, free kill. So it actually, I'm actually glad that happened. So the Viego's, Went the wrong side, 100%. <laughs> but because we put the wave in, in a position, like we attacked a wave that we didn't need to attack, and then we left more blue, your brother was in a position to be ganked. Mm -hmm. Boof, and he actually did get ganked. Okay, well there you have it. We have the farming jungle video, we have the jungle mistakes video, and now we have the early game jungling video. Slap in that 1000 challenge jungler case study, and you've got yourself a nice package to carry, win, and climb in season 12. I hope all of these videos in this little mini series has been helpful. Please do consider leaving a like, and of course commenting and subscribing if you enjoyed and learned something. Do subscribe to the channel if you feel the content is worthy. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.